Wombat Rescue, a Kickstarter game that I actually paid quite a bit of money for. Kickstarted this, had it delivered to my house. This is a game that I wasn't going to kickstart. I kept seeing it and kept seeing it, and I was like, not going to. This is the power of advertising on me. It can work. I kept seeing advertisements. I kept hearing about how good it was. I was like, what the heck? The components look great. Let's give it a shot. And I did. And I got a game that works. This is not a story of a Kickstarter game where I was ripped off or anything like that. This is a good game. This is a game. The game works. Unfortunately, it's not a game for me. And I have to say, love the components, love these dingoes, I love the wombats. The board is modular, that's nice. These tiles are nice, the components are out of the world. I had to sticker my own food, which I don't like. I have no complaints about the look of the game. It's weird, the Wombat Rescue. I mean, it's a weird game. It's one of the things that drew me to it was the fact that this is a new theme. When's the last time we had a Wombat game that came out? You mean this not set in fantasy sen setting or space? Wow, who will buy this game? Well, me. And I suppose a lot of other people. I think this is a fairly successful... Uh, Kickstarter, from what I know. Eagle Griffin Games makes very good games. I've reviewed a few here and I like them. I keep coming back to this as a good game. It's just not something I like. I mean, all you do is move. Um, very abstract, although there's theme just dripping from this thing. But at the end of the day, why does... Why do you... Maybe there's a reason why wombats stay within the smell of their poop. Maybe that's very realistic. I don't know a whole lot about them, but... It was just weird, dare I say, a little abstract and boring for me. Just, just this repetitive moving, and the dingo would catch me, and I'd be back at the start. And uh, I mean, I was progressing because the poop cubes were going out, which was helping me move around the board quicker. And it was a race to get four, and it was a miss. It just didn't have enough to keep my interest. Um, I will be purging this game. I don't like abstracts, even when you paint a theme on them. I'm not really big on them. I'm not big on the whole movement thing either, I don't think. With, I just don't know. Like, if there was something else to do, maybe some resources to get, I don't know. Um, it felt a little lucky when I was getting the food, when it was coming out. It felt a little... You know, I had three greens by me, so I picked them up. Maybe I could plan that out a little bit better. I didn't care to plan out anymore. Nothing drew me in to make me care. Um, you know, a lot of these games, there's an interesting thing where you have this special power tile, which, which is worth four victory points at the end of the game, and if you spend it, you don't get the four victory points. But in this game, you really should use all four of your tiles. It's just a matter of timing when you will use them to best use them. Rather than that dynamic with, oh, these are worth victory points on top of it. So, oh, I don't know. Um, it works. It's nice. Didn't draw me in. Uh, I had some issues with the rules, which I'll get into in the rules section. I had some issues with the components. Good quality. And they more relate to the rule book, which I'll get into that section. We were just bored. I played it two player and I played it four player. I didn't play it three, so maybe that's the magic number that it works with. But um gonna highly recommend you try this. Unless you watch the plays and you're like, this is just the kind of game that I like. I love this style. This is what I need. Otherwise, I'm gonna tell you to pass or try before you buy. These are the components for Wombat Rescue, which I'm gonna go through. Uh, first of all, you're going to get one of these deep boxes with a custom insert, which is going to be nice, and you're going to have the little lid that fits over it, and that's always a nice because it kind of puts everything in place, and if you put your punched out cardboard in here, it'll fit really nicely. You're going to get a mama wombat and four little babies that you're going to have. These are really cute. They come in different sizes. The four babies are the same size. You have a mama, and these are going to come in uh, different colors. With the Kickstarter edition, you're going to get the pink. Otherwise, you're going to get blue, the red that you saw, 
and the purple and the yellow. So to make a five player, I think this is a Kickstarter exclusive. I could be wrong, but I think that's what happened. Uh, then you're gonna get five of these real nice cardboard. Um, these are your powers. There's four used in a normal game. There's a variant to use the fifth one. You're gonna get these nice boulders that are used in a variant or more experienced players, if you will. Some of this might be Kickstarter exclusive. Um, in mine, I got three of these dingoes. Uh, these are really cool. Uh, you only play with one in a normal game. There's a variant for two, and I suppose you could have three. Real big, clunky die. It's wooden. It's real nice. Uh, one, two, three, four. So some of the sides are more likely to come up than others. These tiles are going to come with it. The book says you're supposed to have 24. I have probably 30, 32 in my set. That might be a Kickstarter thing. Different colors. They kind of fit together, as you can see, pretty nicely. You're going to get a deck of what they call Wanderer cards. Um, they're going to have two of the different type of tiles. And then some of them will have a food icon on it, as you can see. Okay. So those are pretty nice. Uh, on the backs, they all kind of look the same. So they are what they are. Um, they're not the best quality cards. Uh, they're probably the least, I mean, these backs are really, really nice, but it's probably the thinnest or the worst component of the game, and they're still fairly nice. I mean, I'm not going to rag on them too much. Uh, Eagle Griffin always makes really great components. You get a draw bag with the Eagle Griffin Games logo on it. This is really nice and probably much bigger than it needs to be. Then you're going to get these food coupons or tokens uh, that are really nice. You get the sticker them yourself, which is a huge turnoff for me. Otherwise, they're small. They're nice. Um, and then poop cubes, which are just regular cubes in different colors. And there's regular cubes. They're, they're bigger, so they're nicer. Um, and those are the components. You can see how the little babies fit on the board and the mama wombat. Looks fairly nice. You're going to get a full color rule book. Plenty of tiles. You're going to get this little spot where the dingo will stay on. Pretty nice. It's nice cardboard. And those are the components. Overall, very good. Uh, the player mat, I don't think I showed you. Shows you the values of the different colors, the digestion system, and how the poop cube comes out. And this is where you put, uh, really, just a holding cell when you get the babies. It's, and they go home eventually. So this is really nice. Thick. And looks pretty cool. So the components are off the charts. Very, very, very good components. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm quibbling when I say something about these cards. I'm just quibbling. Like, everything is really, really nice. So no complaints. The rules. The rules, the rules, the rules. Uh, good and bad. You get a nice full color rule book. You get the components. Now, listen, I kickstarted this game. Maybe I should have paid more attention that there's going to be extra tiles and stuff. But the rule book says there's 24 tiles. I had like 32. It's a little tricky for me to know, okay, Am I supposed to include all these tiles? Are there certain tiles I need to include and certain ones I don't? I didn't know. It wasn't included in the rule book. Uh, also, it says two dingoes. I ended up with three, but you only need one to play. I was kind of at a loss, but I was to explain a little bit better. Um, they never explained the icons on the tiles. I ended up figuring it out, but I got really frustrated uh, because you might be able to see it, but there's a food icon and a boulder icon. It tells you to set the game up, and the setup to use the food icon, which is just a leaf. And the other one kind of looks like a kidney bean, and it's a boulder. You only learn about the boulders and the variants. So I wasn't sure if I was supposed to put food on everything, because I had them left over in the bag and didn't really understand. So that could have been set up a little bit differently, or, or explained a little bit differently. And then the setup of the game, you get like a, an idea set up, and then you get some alternate ones on the back. But I was a little unclear with... Does it matter where the wombats' babies are placed? Does, do they have to be in the back? As an example, they're all in the back. Was that important? Because the ones on the back of the rule book, I can't really see where the icons are too well. Um, so I wasn't sure if this was just an example of what it should look like, but the tiles should not be in this order. I was just a little confused with that. 
I usually don't like it when rule books start with how to play with these are definitions. I gotta learn what smell areas are and wombat movement is before they ever actually teach me the game. I found those two concepts were pretty fairly easy. The rule book maybe made them just a, just a smidge harder than they should have been. Otherwise, per fairly simple. I mean, the rules are really just a page or two. We did have some problems with the rules and had some questions. I didn't didn't like the game enough to go online and try to figure out the answer. I like to try to find the answer from the rule book. If I love a game, I'll go in on, on the BGG and start looking for things. But for the most part, I didn't. Uh, one of the things I wasn't completely sure about we had a situation where the dingo was two spaces away from the closest wombat mama. He rolled a three on the dice. Now, does he stop at the mama wombat and take her back home? Does he go through her but still send her back? Or does he go to the other mama wombat that was actually three spaces away? Never got an answer to that. Um, I don't know. We went to the closest one and stopped. That's what we did. Um... But at one point in the game, there was one two spaces away, one three spaces away. They rolled a three. Exactly. So which one was closer? Or did you have to use all the movement? It was in the rule book. Otherwise, there's a ton of variants. So you get a fifth player roll. Uh, I think that's Kickstarter. I believe so. Then you get solo game rules. So you can play by yourself. And you get the, the, the boulders, the dingo eats poop, and then you can use two dingoes. But I got three in the package. There's no explanation of why I got three. And there's some optional rules for shorter, shorter, shorter games, alternate layouts, and 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 blah blah blah. And then you get the fifth, uh, the dino, uh, the dingo protection, which was nice. So it gives you more options. A lot of variability in the game. It's a modular game. It it, it feels like it has some flexibility because you're not really doing much. You're just kind of moving around. Uh, the rule book. I want to say it was better, but it's, it's average. I mean, I had questions. I couldn't figure it out. We had to house rule it. Um, that's a problem in a rule book. I'm surprised it never came up. All right, let's go through flow of the game. So you're going to have your little player mat. I, this is not the full board setup. You would normally have 24 tiles. Four of them will have the people's little baby wombats on them and I just set up a mini board now if you're playing with more than one player the baby wombats would all be on the same spaces like that and the mommy wombat the mama wombat as they're called you know everybody would start the same place with a poop cube on it and that's kind of how it all starts I'm just going to show you how it plays with just the red just to show that, but that's how it would be set up. So I'm gonna take the blue off just for confusing purposes. Now, this is a very, very simple game to play. But the setup, you have 24 tiles. You're always gonna start with a home with your mama on it and a poop cube. And rules don't explain this, but this symbol is a food. So you randomly pull from the bag cubes and put them out there. I put this out there, and like I said, this is smaller than normal. Uh, on your player mat, based on the number of players, you're always gonna start with a black cube right here, or a black tile there. And then based on their players, they may have a green or an orange or a black in their mouth. The first player will start with nothing. Fairly easy to do. Now, a couple things that are, e that are pretty important to understand is the concept of movement. The movement is fairly easy to understand, but let me explain how it works. For every poop cube you have on the board, you're within what's called a smell radius for two spaces. So you can just count one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. If you happen to have two poop cubes there, you now have a smell radius of three. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. And if you had three, which is the maximum, you would have a smell radius of four. One, two, three, four. And it's always gonna be the number of cubes plus one but the game's gonna start out in one. So the way you can move is you can always move in a straight line in an infinite amount of spaces until you leave one space outside of your smell cube. So technically you could move one, two, three, a third spot. Or you must stop if you come to a food. So I technically couldn't move there because I would have had to stop here and collect this food. 
or if you stop at somebody else's poop cube or the edge of the board, you have to stop. Uh, or if you get into a spot with a dingo. Now the dingo will start to get on the board there. And the last player will start with a dingo dice. That's how that works. You can also do what's called a special move. If you are out of your zone, so if you were here, one, two is out of my zone, I was over here, I could always move one adjacent space if there's food or if there's a wombat there of my own color. So that's called a special move. Or a wander move, which means you're going to take the deck of cards, you're going to flip the top card over, and you can move to one of these tiles if they're adjacent. If you don't have one adjacent to you, you draw another card until you get one that has it adjacent. If you draw one with this tile, it's set aside if it has the food tile or the food icon on it because when you get three of these you're going to refill the board of food and that's pretty much how that's going to work so that is pretty much the entire game rules you have to understand your smell radius and the movement the three types of movement so let's go through a turn what you're going to do and i'm not going to play the whole game like you've seen us do sometimes i'm going to take you through a turn so you can do zero to three moves so you can move not at all or you can move three, so I'd move here. It always has to be in a straight line if you're moving. So one, and then this would go over here in my mouth. I could move for my second move in a straight line and take this black one, and it goes over here in my mouth. And then I could move, because this is a two in radius, I can move out of here for another move. And that would be my three moves. So I moved one, two, three, straight line for each move. Then I would go into the digestive uh, phase, which means all of this is going to move down. Now, in order to move from the mouth, from the first space, into the digestive, it has to equal three. So the black is worth three. I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring it up here. In order for it to move, it has to equal three. So the black is three and the green is one. So three plus one plus one is five. They can thus move to the next spot. And they always have to move in a set like that. Okay, and then the last thing we would do is clean up. So if there were three of these Wanderer cards with those food icons, we would refill. And if you are the one holding the dingo dice, you would move this and then move the dingo. So let's pretend like we're going to move it. He has to move four spaces closest to the Mama Wombat, closest to him. So let's take the next turn, just to illustrate a point here. So now I can't move. I am outside my radius, so... I can't do a special movement because nothing is adjacent, so I'm going to draw a Wanderer card. And let's say, for argument's sake, let me find the actual card that I want to draw. I want to draw this card because I'm going to move here to illustrate a point. So this would be the Wanderer. This would be the color adjacent, so I can move here. That's one movement. Now, even though I'm outside the smell zone, I have food next to me. I can move here for a special move. Put the food in my mouth and then I would be where I couldn't move again because I'm outside the smell zone one two there's nothing adjacent so I would have to draw the top card of the wonder deck and I can move to either one of these spaces that are adjacent to me so this planes one is adjacent to me I just happen to be back in my smell zone now let's talk about these these tiles that you get so they all are going to do different things and these are our tiles that you can use one time in the game, and that's it. They're gone. This one is a high fiber diet. This takes whatever is on the right side the most and goes ahead and lets you poop it out. So you can poop this out, move whatever is there, and poop it out. I'm going to get to what the pooping does in just a moment. This one is a scamper. And what it allows you to do is you can move one space in any direction regardless of anything. So it just allows you to move one space on the board that might be important. This is hold it in. Use this tile to stop a set of food discs from moving off the right side space on your player board. So if you don't want to poop something out, you can kind of clench in and keep it inside of you. And that might be a good way to you want to place it on the board. And you'll see that in a second. This is run home. At any point you play this, and your mama wombat will, all, will automatically go home. And that can be important after you get one of your baby wombats. So if you're up here and you get a baby wombat and Dingo is right next door, just take the baby wombat and go all the way home. Okay? And that's what you'll do. And you do have a fifth one. 
which is optional, okay? And this one is completely op optional that you don't have to use it if you don't want to. Uh, but it's a dingo protection action tile. So for you can use this and a dingo can't attack you for that turn. Uh, but it's an optional variant. And that's how those work. So I believe I was right here. Um, I would do the digestion. So all of this would come down. This is only worth two, the orange. So it doesn't move yet. It stays in his mouth. But this one came off. So this is going to go back in the bag. And I'm going to get a poop cube. And that poop cube is going to land where I'm sitting. Now, if it happened to be these three, I would get three cubes dropped where I'm at. But that's not the case. And three is the maximum you can have on a tile. And what this is going to do is start to help your move radius and help you be able to move. Now I can move all the way up to here, or actually all the way up to there if I wanted to on my move. And then if it was somebody's turn. And you don't roll a dingo dice on everybody's turn. It starts out in the hands of the person that's going last. So they will roll when it comes around four player game. It'll every four everyone everybody goes one time. Now the dingo, if he catches you, you immediately go back home. He would go back to his den and be placed back on the board. And that's kind of how he works. So he he always gonna be going towards the person uh, closest mama wombat. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get up here and get your wombats, and they go over here in your pouch and get back and deliver them. You can only carry one at a time. When you get all four of your wombats back home, you are declared the winner of the game. And the whole game, remember this is a smaller board, I just did this to set up to show you. The whole point of the game is to get these smell cubes out there so you can move around the board a little bit quicker. Because theoretically, you can move, you know, if you had some poop cubes out here, like this, let's just say it's progressing the game, you could theoretically move all the way up here in one turn, put your baby there, and then move all the way back. And that would be one move. So. The game starts off a little slow because you're trying to get these poop cubes out and get them spread out across the board. But as the game progresses, you'll be able to move a little bit quicker because you can move into a straight line until you hit something. And that can be very, very helpful. Now these boulders are an optional. They start on these boulder, some tiles with these, looks like kidneys on them. And what they're basically going to do is block any movement. So you can, you know, if you were moving over here... I couldn't move adjacent here because there's boulders here. You kind of have to go around it. It just kind of prolongs the game. and makes a little bit more strategy, I guess. I wasn't uh, keen on it too much. Uh, but And then you can always have more dingoes out if you wanted to. The game comes, at least my copy came with three. So there's two here and one on the board. So you can have more dingoes kind of run around the board. That's Wombat Rescue. So what you're doing is moving within your poop zone, your smell zone, and trying to get your wombats back home. That's pretty much the entire game. Not difficult at all. Who should buy this game? Um, people like me, people who buy Kickstarters Unseen. Uh, I would say try this game before you buy it. Otherwise, people who like a little light game... Very easy. Might get some humor out of the poop cubes. Might be helpful. Uh, the game is fairly easy. There is some strategy in it, but it's pretty straightforward strategy. It didn't have a whole lot of problems with the strategy. Um, it's you know, placing the poop cubes out is going to help you move better. It's fairly straightforward. Maybe only one or two strategies in the game. Um, let's see. Non gamers would probably like this, but they're going to need help with the rules, likely. You can play this with uh, new gamers, probably. You're really just moving. Zero, one, two, or three spaces. And, you know, you can illustrate the movement rather quickly. Otherwise, uh, you may have seen this game before. You may have played it before, and you may have liked it. And then you'll know if you like it or not. Uh, this might be a game to bring out of the con or a friend's night if they happen to have it. If there was a place to rent it, like a Blockbuster for, for board games, I would say go there and rent it before you buy it. Some things are instant buys. This is going to be an instant rent. Uh, try it out. It's not terrible. It's a good game. It's just you. It's going to be a special player. If you happen to like abstracts and you're wanting a lighter abstract, this may be it. Also, this is all about movement and placement uh, versus um, you know having a deep understanding or plan that you're going to come out with a strategy. I think that's fair to say.